Have you ever had an Age of Empires match where pressure was the name of the game? You're getting hit from all sides and you are wondering, how do I even deal with this? How can I turn around and win when I'm constantly under pressure? Well, I have lost plenty of games that way and I've won plenty of games that way. And I had a really fun one I wanted to share with you. So we're here on Arabia, uh, particularly Green Arabia. I think it's a little... Uh, hillier than its sandy counterpart. And uh, my opponent here, Rosetti, I'll call him Rose. Rose here in the red playing as the Saracens. And I'm in the blue playing as the Ethiopians. I don't remember off the top of my head whether I randomed Ethiopians or whether I picked them. I, I tend to random more often than not. I think that it's a good idea once you feel comfortable with the game and you know you're developing your your, your general skills, it's a good idea to randomize in order to get a feel for all the different sieves and help develop your flexibility, you know, as opposed to just picking Franks every time or, you know, Mayans or what have you, you know, and, and, and learning one civilization, getting really good with that sieve, and then you'll climb really high with the one sieve, but then when you try anything else, you fall apart, right? So it might take longer to climb an elo, but I think it's worth it in the long run. So I, I like to random. And, uh, although I do on occasion pick Civ, I don't random 100% of the time. Sometimes I feel like playing Bulgarians or what have you, right? So, uh, Ethiopians I like to play for once in a while. They're a favorite archer Civ of mine. And I went up against the Saracens. I, I thought that was a fascinating choice. And, um, you know, the thing that's neat about Saracens is they are a very flexible civilization. You know, they have archers with that uh, team bonus of theirs, which gives them uh, additional damage against buildings. So the archers will actually melt through structures a lot more quickly than normal. But then they also have a really solid, uh, stable line. Uh, I mean, just across the board. You know, Saracens can do anything. So right now, the openings are pretty standard. Pretty standard stuff. I'm, I'm deciding to go for kind of a fast castle sort of build. You know, and my opponent, you can see the beginnings of a wall here. He's going to end up doing the same thing, right? Yeah, this is all looking pretty normal. We've got, unfortunately for him, one of those rogue villagers. This is, if I were to make a list of like the top five most annoying things in Age of Empires 2, uh... One of them has to be the sheep herders that just decide to go off, a single sheep herder that decides to go off and kill a sheep all by themselves. I'm going to guess Rose here set them all to the boar, and this this vill here just decided, nah, it'd be more fun to kill the pig, why not? It's looking at me funny, I don't like him. I'm going to go ham on this pig. So, you know, yeah, it, that's really annoying, I feel bad for him. But not too bad. He's my opponent. Over on my end, I, I've got my second boar in a little bit faster, I think, than him. But it's going all right so far. You can kind of see down in the idle TC time, and I'm always pointing you over to the idle TC time. He's a little bit higher, but it's not so bad. We're basically neck and neck. And, I mean, I think 15 seconds is not the biggest difference in the world. It's definitely area for improvement, but... Uh, not the biggest difference in the world. It's whether or not you can keep it down to 16 or 30 seconds, or whether you let it balloon up to, you know, five, six minutes. You know, one of the things i got to give Rose kudos on is setting up his houses to start that wall, and, and having that game plan out of the gate, I think, is really good. That's something I'm working on. I... I think I do that some games, and then other games I get distracted by other things. Maybe I want to go on the offense, and, you know, it just doesn't happen. Like like here, I, I think I've got more houses. Uh, fortunately, I, I was able to plug those, but I guess these are the starting houses. Never mind. You will see I am luring in the deer. That's part of what I like to do if I'm going to go fast castle. Uh, bring your deer in, and if you can save the hundred wood by using your scout to push the deer in, even better. I'm, at this point, I'm looking down at the scoreboard. I see that Rosetti here is ahead of me, but I'm not that worried about it because I'm not doing a lot of scouting. 
if we were to check this out here, right? This is all I can see on the map. This is the danger of pushing your deer, going fast castle, is you don't have eyes on what your opponent is doing. But, you know, it, it does mean that you can get more resources and it will help you get up to the next age faster. So, I'm not really all that worried about the score. And actually, I'm feeling pretty good at this point because if he's only 60 points ahead of me or so, and I'm not doing any scouting, well, I bet you I'm, I'm really more like even once I start scouting, right? That's what always goes through my head. Yeah, now meanwhile, he's over here doing a great job walling up. Good, good, good. Well done on his part. If I were doing a men-at-arms rush, I probably could have gotten in here. But otherwise, I, I think he blocks me in. If, if I were rushing him. Which I'm not. So we, we both appear to be going for a fast castle. And when, in fact, as I come down and I'm scouting, I see the walls, I start to not relax, that's the wrong word, but I start to game plan for fast castle versus fast castle. What kind of castle age army am I going to be dealing with uh, versus him? What I do not see is this right here. Two vills and an archery range. The Hiram special. <laughs> Hiram, I don't know if he still does this or not, but Hiram used to be the biggest fan of what he calls FOBs, forward operating bases. He loves sending a couple of villagers out and getting production buildings right on the enemy's base. You know, just, just a ways away and then producing an army right there in front of them and rushing forward and attacking. It can be very effective. It's dangerous if it's spotted. And it's very dangerous if if caught and destroyed. Because let's say that I had an army and I come in and wipe this out, all of a sudden, he has no military buildings back at home, and now he has to go on defense without any military buildings. He's scrambling to get something up, and he may not be able to pull it off. But in this case, we switch over to my view. I don't see that. I see nothing. All I see are walls, and I'm figuring Castle Age versus Castle Age. What you can see... Yes, boy, I'm, I'm nearly up to the castle age. I just got to get the buildings going. I'm a little low on wood. I'm trying to get my walls up. What I don't see are, what is that, four archers already out and five more on the way. And at this point, I don't know that, of course, either. I see four archers, and I'm still thinking, okay, he's archer rushing me into a castle. So he's going to attack me with a couple of ills, or I'm sorry, a couple of archers, and then, you know, do a fast castle behind that. But, you know, if he were doing that, I probably wouldn't have this video on YouTube. No, no, no. He doesn't want to go for a 3-4 archer push into Fast Castle. Where is the fun in that? No. This guy here, a rose by any other name, still has its thorns, and they are archers. He is going all in into a feudal archer push. And I gotta say, I love it. I love this kind of aggression, and I applaud him for going into this, you know, just, again, heavy feudal pressure. It's hard to win the game like this, but as he's fighting me, and, and I, I'm counting my lucky stars here, I think a mistake that he makes is just focusing down the archery range. At first, I'm thinking it's a big mistake because it's buying me time to keep my economy going and get up a response, right? It's not as big of a mistake, though, and I started to realize this because, again, that Saracen Archer bonus means this building is going down way, way faster than any other uh, Civ's, you know, Archer's would, right? And, and, in fact, he's melting it so quickly that he kind of scares me into making a blunder. I, I start to throw down a Watchtower. My thought is if I get the Watchtower up, you know, I can push off these Archers, save the Archery range. But really, the archery range is not worth it. I kind of lucked out in that he moved forward enough to lose a couple of archers, but, you know, I lose all of that stone and all of that wood for trying to protect a, a building I could just rebuild somewhere else. What I should have done was build the watchtower to protect my wood line back here, or maybe my gold, in order to make sure that I can keep my economy going. That's what I should have done. 
Fortunately, I do get out five skirmishers. And I actually have one spearman as well to try to... To try to maybe catch the scout too. But really, it's the skirmishers versus the archers here. And you can see the health difference in the bottom left-hand corner. And what I'm telling myself, I'm doing pretty good on food. And I'm doing pretty good on wood. And... You know, I'm losing skirmishers, that hurts, but I'm whittling away that archer horde, too. And here's what I'm telling myself at this point. This is why I put the video up. I am sweating bullets right now. But, I see the scoreboard is actually in my favor, and that, that kind of gives me some breathing room. But on top of that, too, I'm, I'm also asking myself, you know, when you're, when you're being pressured like this, the first thing is to always stay calm, don't panic, think of a game plan. Figure out what should I be doing in this situation. So for me, it's all about getting more skirmishers out. Skirmishers are the name of the game because he appears to be going all in on archers. And the other thing that always helps me is to tell myself, to remind myself, that um, if he is putting in this much pressure early on, then he has to be paying for it back at home. And I don't realize how bad he is, but as he's pushing him, you can actually see, I'm up 12 villagers over him. He's got a fair number of vill... Well, actually, he's still got the same two. And so, you know, his idle TC time, he's up eight minutes of idle TC time. Everything is in this push. So, if I can survive this push, I will be in a very good spot to win the game. Just stay calm. And here... You know, he's, he finally is moving out those archers, trying to get some pressure on the eco, and he will find some kills here. Now, I purposefully select the villager to attack the scout just to keep the scout from moving so that my skirmishers can, you know, do some damage. I, the, sc the scout is actually the big concern of mine because, obviously, uh, the skirms do not counter scouts. And here he's pulling back. So I've, I've scared him off. And again, I've got an eco lead. I'm actually kind of sort of winning this thing. As long as I can stay calm. Because at any moment, this could turn against me. Now again, I never scouted this. And I don't see the double stables going up. I don't see, of course, forging coming in. No, no, I'm all in on this... You know, counter archer game, right? Yes, yeah, so I've got 10 skirms holding back 14 archers. And you do need to be aware, you know, when you're going up against an opponent, be aware of not just the units you see, not just the units that they have, but the units that they could have. Because if you're not careful, you will get jujitsu'd. And, um,. You know, you'll, they'll counter your counter, and then you don't have a counter to their counter, to your counter to their counter. And then you're in an awful lot of trouble. So yeah, now he's... What I'm thinking at this point, again, kind of going back into what I can see, it seems to me like he's desperate to try to keep some kind of pressure going. So I've got two different wood spots, and I figure, well, as long as I can keep any one of them going, I'm fine. So, you know, pull back one set of woodvilles, put pressure on the archers. Keep the other side going. And this right here is where I make my big mistake. I see the archers and I figure, you know what? It'd be great if I could get my skirmishers out there and fight them. There's, you know, a little house here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and fight. I'll delete the house and move in. I don't know that he's got these, you know, light cav, the scouts waiting to just burst right through. And this is a problem. Now we've got an issue. In a moment like this, my main concern... Uh, yeah, you want to keep the villagers safe. But what I find is making sure that you keep your fighting force alive is at least as important. So I'm pulling back the vills, hoping they stay safe, and then trying to use the skirms to maybe push back the archers without losing the skirms at the same time. So this is really rough song and dance. And meanwhile, in the background, producing spearmen. And fortunately, he does not run wild on me. You know, he's, he's massing up even more scouts. And I'm lucky that he doesn't just swing south, start attacking the food vills, start uh, trying to get into this wood line over here. 
He's buying me enough time to get in a little bit of a response. And here we go. I'm up. So the good news, I'm up to the castle age. I'm on my way. The bad news, I still have to survive 13 archers and now 12 scouts. But again, I'm up 20 vils. So if I can survive this, I'm in a really good spot. If I can survive. So here, he's moved in. The nice thing is that I, I that freeze up my skirms to try to maybe get some kills on the archers at the same time as he's navigating here. I tried quick one. See, this is a mistake of mine. I, I let holes get into the walls, and and now I'm I'm going to lose vils I wasn't losing. Up to this point, I've been doing a really good job not losing anybody. But now, now it hurts. He gets a scout on my skirms, but I'm pulling them back. And again, here's where uh, this is sort of works in my favor, and I would highlight this. If, if you are someone who likes to raid, then this is something you want to pay attention to. Be aware of, like, letting your scouts just, you know, wail away at houses. You know, this, he was more or less wasting his time there. You know, he was doing a great job keeping you off of the wood, and if that's all he wanted to do, fine, leave him there, and then they can just hit the buildings, but... I think he should have taken a cluster of those scouts and just moved around the gold, the stone, kept patrolling and tried to keep me off of resources while he builds up back at home. Now, one of the reasons, and I, I'm counting my lucky stars, I think this maybe helped me survive this, is the Ethiopian bonus of immediately getting the pikeman upgrade as soon as you take up to the castle age. So that's going to be really useful. Luckily, luckily the scouts don't break through there. Yeah, as we're watching this battle, recognize that a huge part of the game is what's happening back in his base. Nearly 15 minutes, here it is, 15 minutes idle TC time. He is all in, all the food, all the resources are going into these scouts, into these archers. He doesn't even really have the resources to go up to crossbowmen, you know, or, or light cav. So this is a... A, a feudal commitment. Meanwhile, I'm trying to get up whatever resources I can in order to get, you know, again, I've got pikemen. I'm going to want to get, um, you know, Imperial Skirm, I'd imagine. But even better than that, what I realize at this point, at this point as I'm fighting and I'm doing this song and dance with the pikemen and the skirms, and I, I'm only going to be able to hold for so long. And I see, even before I see the knights come in, but especially after the knights come in, I'm realizing I need a Castle Age power unit. And I'm the Ethiopian, so my game plan now is to try to mass up archers back here. And... Yeah, I'm going to do as much damage as I can. We're, we're finally fighting here. I'm getting raided in the back. Fortunately, I've got some pikemen. You know, and again, I, I think if I were stuck on spearmen, I think they get overwhelmed by the knights. So thank you, Ethiopians, for having that pikemen bonus. Again, I got two two knights just wailing away at the market. You know, they're all kind of split off doing their own thing. And that distraction is making the difference here. Got a thumb ring coming in. Got a, a group of archers. I have lost almost 20 villagers. Does that hurt? Yes. Yes, it does. But again, keep calm. Don't throw in the towel just yet. Just because you've lost Vils, just because you're feeling frustrated, don't do it. And in this case, I am I am pushing him off. And these two knights that are remaining, they're really not doing anything. They're keeping me off of the farms. I am leery about going back to farm there just yet. Now, this part hurts. What he has done effectively is kept me off of gold, so I can't really research any more or build any more archers. Um, maybe I can get one more out, but that's it. Um, I, I need crossbow, and I need gold for that. So, fortunately, I have wood. I have stone. I'm getting up a second TC because that is my game plan. Is If you can push back an initial assault and get some breathing room, 
a lot of times what I'll try to do is get my economy up and running, you know, and, and, and focus on that. So if I can get up a second town center, I can try to, at the time I was thinking, catch up to his villager numbers. I figured he was ahead of me. I wanted to play catch up. Or, again, at this point I see I'm still actually ahead of him points wise. So I'm thinking maybe he's only on one town center. That would make sense. And if I go two TCs, then I can get an economic lead and maybe I can win this thing. In the meantime, I've, so I'm trying to buy myself some time. I'm building the economy up at home, and I do something risky. I decide I'm going to go on the offense and uh, send my archers forward. This is very dangerous because I think all he needs to do is take these five knights and move south, and I'm in trouble. But I figure even if I lose the crossbows, it's worth it to buy myself some, some time to get the eco up. I don't know about this castle. Uh, I, I have no idea about it, and that's a little scary, uh, you know. But then again, I'm really not. I'm not going into Cav Archer, so I don't need to worry about his Camel Archer unique unit. And that castle only really blocks me off of this wood line, which is okay because I've got all this wood here, and I've got you know this wood line here now. So castle's not really doing a lot against me. And here's where I realize, wait a minute. Like, there's nothing at home. This is the first time that I, I gather he's been all in this whole time. There's His base is abandoned. So my thought process is I'm going to try to mass up more archers at home. Whether they are maybe a replacement for these guys or if I can actually, you know, you know link them together and get a big crossbow horde. That'd be great. Yeah, he's gonna. He's, he's thinking about sending in these six knights, but I've got pikemen. I've kept these pikemen alive this whole time. So fortunately, crossbows with their upgrades outrange the town center. So even if it was garrisoned, I'm fine. I'm slowly whittling away at that TC, pushing back his army. More crossbows at home. Keep production going that's when i talk about stay calm stay cool you know don't let the pressure get to you the, what that really translates to nine times out of ten is keep production going make the moves you've got to make to to save what lives you can save what units you can save but keep the production going uh what production is that well a lot of times that's villager production and sometimes that's military production like right here i've, I've let my production la uh, lapse and i that's a mistake. Keep going. Produce more archers, right? Yeah, so he's still in the same two archer ranges, the same two stables. He's got that castle. And, you know, of course, I don't know this. Although I can gather from, again, being back home, or being back at his home, Rose here has abandoned his farms. The eco's gone. So... You know, I, I, I've got to imagine he's running out of steam. And here it is. Of course, he only has 19 gold. He only has 150 food, 450 wood. He wants to castle drop me and try to swing the odds, win this game with a castle drop on my town center. But fortunately, I sacrifice my pikemen to deal with his knights. And now it's just my five crossbowmen versus his, whatever that was, six archers. But because I kept the eco going at home, I've got the bonuses on the crossbows, I've got the castle age unit, I'm able to push him off of this castle. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a win. He's going to call any second now the GG. As soon as the castle fails to go up, he realizes I've only got 13 bills. I have no eco. I'm, I was all in on feudal. And that's my main advice is, you know, if you're getting slammed in the feudal age, stay calm, keep production going, and recognize he's paying for it at home. So, you know, keep stay in the game. Don't uh, kind of throw your hands up in the air and assume you've lost just because the pressure comes in against you first. Um, you know, and, and even if you do lose, you know, it's like Hiram talks about all the time. He'll say, even in a losing game, I consider it practice. 
you know, what do I do in this situation? How can I minimize my losses and maximize my gains in response? And that's what you want to do, um, you know, when you're facing a situation like this. And sometimes, not always, but sometimes you can pull out a win from a seeming loss. And uh, this was one such match. It was incredible. I actually had two games that were really fascinating games all about pressure. This game and then a different game that'll be uploaded soon. Very different kind of pressure. And uh, the game played out very differently. So look forward to that one. But yeah, this was a lot of fun and I had to share it with you. So go ahead and like the video if you would. Subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate it. And let me know what you think. How do you like to play the game? Do you like doing feudal rushes or do you prefer the fast castle? Um, what do you do when you're the one getting rushed? What are your tips and tricks to surviving this sort of pressure? Let me know in the comments. But with that being said, this is the Iron Kaiser signing out.